presentation of Lucia Martinez for MAD 3107. Today I will be completing questions number 5A and B of homework number one. In this exercise, I will be proving that the Morgan's law that, re that presents the negation of P and Q is logically equivalent to the negation of P or the negation of Q. In order to establish this logical equivalence, I will start by proving it on a truth table. To do this, first we need to go ahead and determine our P's and Q's values. In this case, we need to make sure that we are showing every case possible. Then we need to go ahead and look to what we're looking for. When we're looking at the left hand side, we are looking for the negation of P and Q. In order for us to get the negation of P and Q, we need to know what P and Q is. When using our P and Q's Q values, we can determine that P and Q are true, false, false, and false. Then, we need to determine the negation of P and Q, which when looking at our P and Q values, we can see that they're false, true, true, and true. Then we're looking at the right hand side. We can see the negation of P or the negation of Q. That's what we're trying to obtain. Again, we need to determine our P and Q's values uh, that they need to show every case possible. Then, in order for us to know the, no the negation of P or the negation of Q, we need to know what the negation of P and the negation of Q is. In this case, when looking at our P and Q values, we can see how we have the negation of P as false, false, true, and true, and the negation of Q as false, true, false, true. When we go ahead and find the negation of P or the negation of Q, we get the values false, true, true, and true. Here, we can see how both of our tables resulted on the same values. Therefore, the negation of P and Q is logically equivalent to the negation of P or the negation of Q. Now we need to prove the Morgan's law deductively by using the definition of logical equivalence. To do this, we need to prove the, the negation of P and Q is true, so is the negation of P or the negation of Q. In order to do this, we're going to create our case number one, in which we assume that the negation of P and Q is logically equivalent to true. By definition of negation, P and Q must be false. Then, without logic, we can assume that P is logically equivalent to false and Q is logically equivalent to true. By definition of negation, we can say that the negation of P is logically equivalent to true and the negation of Q is logically equivalent to false. Lastly, by definition of or, we can conclude that the negation of P or the negation of Q is logically equivalent to true. In case number two, we will need to prove now that the negation of P and Q is logically equivalent to false. Therefore, the negation of P or the negation of Q is also false. Here, in case number two, first we can assume that the negation of P and Q is logically equivalent to false. By definition of negation, P and Q must be true. By definition of and, we know that P 
must be equal to true and Q must be equal to, to true. By definition of negation, then we know that the negation of P is false and the negation of Q is also false. Lastly, by definition of or, we can also conclude that the negation of P or the negation of Q is true. When we look at our two conclusions, we can see how the negation of P and Q is logically equivalent to the negation of P or the negation of Q. This concludes my video presentation. Thank you very much.